a beautiful day for sailing. We've got uh, oh, full sails out. I'm on a almost a beam reach, not quite close reaching. Uh, doing six knots, feet over ground. And what I wanted to show you here, is someone had asked me to see the uh, the main how the main sheet runs. So the main sheet is this black and red line here. It runs back to the second winch back there. Runs up through a block here. Through a series of blocks back to the mid middle of the boom. And then back down over here to the far side. And it's a uh, continuous loop back to the far winch back, back there. And the advantage to that is that you can sheet in or ease out from either so side. It's called the German system. Uh, very, very nice. I love that. I don't think I'd ever get a boat that didn't have that um, system in the future. So I just wanted to show you what getting underway at 3 o'clock in the morning looks like when you're near the Arctic Circle. <laughs> myself onto a pontoon last night in the middle of the night so today I want to take advantage of that and I want to try to clean up some of the tire scuppings so this is the before you can see it's really quite a mess and I'm using a product called Pierre d'Argent uh, which is some kind of a uh, argile uh, clay pumice type well, here's what it looks like after five minutes of work. So here I haven't done anything yet. You can see, but he scuffed up pretty badly. Here it just came straight off with the uh, Pierre d'Argent. And here I haven't done yet, but that sure cleans it up really nicely. So don't worry about tires. They leave marks, but they come off very easily. Sunrise on a Sunday morning in the Faroe Islands. Look at the southern entrance to Vestman Sound. Just spectacular. Caves along the coast. Carvings up on the cliffs. The Faroe Islands. Well worth the trip. Yeah, nature has carved out. A series of caves in uh, along the coastline here in the Westman Sound. Pretty spectacular scenery here in the uh, Faroe Islands. Last year, in my visit to the Faroe Islands, I sailed right along this coastline here. It's absolutely spectacular, and there's a waterfall right there that this lake empties into. And this waterfall is quite spectacular. And it uh, falls, it goes right down there, falls down into the ocean. And I came sailing by here, but I couldn't get in real close because it was a very stormy day that day. It was very rough. But I, so anyway, here is the waterfall that I sailed under last year. It was so spectacular, seen from the ocean. Uh, it's a shame I can't quite get the angle I'd like to have from here. But it is just beautiful. I'm arriving in the uh, Faroe Islands port of Tuari just at the same time a squall is arriving. Can you believe that? Let me show you this. Look out there. Blue skies, low level cumulus, no problem at all. Over here, a squall arriving. <laughs> I had bad luck on this. <laughs> This journey or what? Okay, I slowed down and the squall winds, which were 17 knots, 90 degrees, uh, have subsided. So now all this left is a little bit of rain. I'll take the rain over the wind any day. Okay, let's do this.
I'm motoring out of my fourth and final harbor visit to, to the Faroe Islands this year. The next stop is Scotland, 220 miles away. Well, sailing past uh, the southernmost point of the Faroe Islands, right over there. I got about uh, 15 knots of wind, uh, so I'm on a deep broad reach, 150 degrees, about 15 knots of wind, 15, 18 knots of wind, just perfect. I'm going to have to drive a couple of times though because the, uh, the angle of the wind is not quite right, but uh, that's fine. In the last episode I mentioned uh, conditions where uh, I run with just the uh, Genoa out, uh, like when the wind was 20 gusting to 28 to 30 knots uh, from a beam. Well, I've got the wind from a beam right now, and I've got 22 knots, 20 to 22 knots of wind, true wind, but uh, I've got both sails out. And the difference is, <laughs> this is very comfortable because there are no gusts, there aren't those violent gusts that were causing the rounding up. So the sails are in trim, the boat's in trim, and we're doing about six knots. Uh, heading downwind very comfortably. It's more comfortable if you can keep the mainsail out because it keeps that pressure, uh, that constant pressure on. So, well, I hope Eric will forgive me, but I'm heading south where it's warm again. Did the, the Vikings ever go south? I'll have to look that up. This is the entrance to Lach Inver in Scotland at 0245, bright and early. Welcome to Lach Inver in uh, Scotland where I arrived at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning last night. Uh, Isabel is all safely tucked away here. Well, I thought I'd show you uh, what today's passage is. I'll give you a little glimpse of this. So here I am up in Scotland, here's the UK and here's Ireland, Scotland, and I'm on an 85 mile passage from Loch Inver, where I left from here early this morning, coming down around the corner here, under the bridge to, uh, to the uh, Isle of Skye, which is this area here, Skye and into the sound of sleet which is this area here now what's tricky about this passage is this area here the tidal current runs at eight knots eight knots so you have to get your timing exactly right or you won't make it and uh, I did all my timing uh, so the trick that's no no problem getting the timing is the problem is that it was 65 miles to get to the critical point um, and so to get your timing right to enter here 65 miles further on is uh, a bit of a challenge but I'm perfectly on schedule or in fact even ahead I did very well in this part here I did the whole planning for five knots now by, because I'm behind the land here the wind is coming in from this direction. The wind is falling a bit. I'm only doing five knots now. But that's what my planning was at. Was planning was at five knots. So coming down here, under the uh, the bridge to the Isle of Skye, through the the um, Kyle. I guess that's the, the the sound of Kyle and then the sound of sleet. Uh, and to my destination, final destination, which is Malig. I just wanted to say one other word here. Uh, and I did the planning at five knots. Uh, the first third of the thing I did, uh, I was sailing at about six knots. Now I'm falling right to five knots now. If it falls below that to four and a half, four point six, the engine is coming on. Because that, I know there's a lot of people out there criticize every time they hear an engine groaning. But uh, if you want to do long, long passages, uh, you just have to live with the reality of having to have use the engine from time to time. And if I didn't use the engine today, I just would not make it make my destination. I'd have to uh, divert to some other secondary. Port. The body of water that I'm sailing through now is called 
the Minch. And uh, it separates Highland, mainland Scotland, from the uh, Hebrides, which are about 20 or 30 miles uh, more to the west. And legend have it, has it in Scotland that the uh, Minches are inhabited by a strange species of blue, little blue men who have porpoise-like capability and who take great pleasure in sinking ships and harming sailors. Now I've been told by a very reliable source that the very best method for uh, preventing this is to cite a bit of rhyme. So here goes. <laughs> As I sail south through the realm of the blue minches, I bid they remember Patrick is not counted among Grinches, and therefore they wreak no grief with their winches. Thank you. <laughs> no more poetry. Up ahead, shrouded in cloud, is the Isle of Skye, and uh, the bridge that leads to it. Uh, and over here is something I have not seen in a long, long time. It's a port hand buoy that's green. In other words, this is a place that's red right returning. Because <laughs> you enter this end of the strait, it's red right returning. The other end, it's obviously the European coat, uh, which is different. Um, well, I'm going up the uh, Strait of Kyle um, that leads to the Sound of Sleet. And it's just absolutely beautiful. It's like a scene from this hit series Outlander in Scotland. Of course, that's where we are. But it's rainy <laughs> and overcast, uh, but beautiful. Good fun, though. Good fun. Uh, it, it's missing a bit of wind. That's the same problem I had in the Hebrides last year. No wind. Is that a blue minch? Or maybe just a seal? The entrance to Maleg in Scotland. It's pouring. It's pouring rain, so probably won't see anything. But I'll give it a try. Thank you very much. Right.